going back a long, long time to 1922. And uh, I was born in Glenelg in South Australia. Father was a returned soldier from the First World War. And uh, mother was recently a qualified nurse from the Royal Adelaide Hospital with the most incredible tales of nursing in those days. And the time she walked across the courtyard and the matron called out, Nurse Hill, come here. And she thought, what on earth have I done? And she said, Nurse, as you crossed the courtyard, I saw your ankle. How very immodest. <laughs> Don't let it happen again. <laughs> she had wonderful tales like that to tell. Uh, but Father was awarded a returned soldier's block of land on the Murray River, at a little place called Cadell, and uh, fruit growing. He was an orchardist and it was a magic place to grow up. Mm. We went through the depression years with our own cow, Chooks. We were just across from a wilderness where we could trap rabbits and we grew our own vegetables and being a fruit orchard we had all the fruit we wanted. And of course it was a settlement of returned soldiers so there was a tremendous community spirit, support for each other. And we children, we could wander around for hours on end. Nobody ever worried where we were as long as we were back home before dark or for, in for our meals. And that was grand. I was number one and my sister Vivian was number two and our brother arrived as number three. And I didn't start my nursing training at the Adelaide Children's Hospital until I was 19. Uh, and that was something I always knew I wanted to do and it was, it was just great. Loved every second of it and you know we, we worked long hours mm -hmm. those days. You'd have one day off in 10 or something like that and after that Infant Welfare Tresillian Sydney at Nielsen Park and of course that was a delight, it was such a, such a beautiful spot there. Mm. And then the next year, Broken Hill for my midwifery. And that girls, believe you me, was the most incredible, magical experience anybody could ever have. Mm. And then there was of course a wonderful story that's at the beginning of the book, of the little Aboriginal girl who came in with her grandma. Mm. And she came into the foyer and there was a low coffee table with a beautiful ceramic pot on it and a maiden hair fern and so forth. And Grandma brought the 16 year old girl in and advanced labour and uh, Grandma was taken off to do the paperwork and I'd only been there for four months, a very new pupil midwife. And the girl got a strong contraction, dived down under the coffee table. Oh, I got down on all fours and said, Mary, Mary, you know, come out and we'll help you. Through the door came sister, the supervising uh, labour ward sister, a very, very big lady with stiffly starched, you know, the old veil. Mm -hmm. and, Nurse, what are you doing? I said, it's a little Aboriginal girl under here and she's in advanced labour and I can't get it. In that moment, sister was down on all fours and changed into the softest, gentlest voice and said, Mary, come and we'll help you. And contraction passed. Mary came out, got another contraction, flung her arms round sister's neck, the veil went over, over one eye, <laughs> membranes ruptured, blood and like were all of the matron's meticulous uniform. She didn't blink an eyelash. And I was going, oh, uh, I'll take her into the, into the ante room and get the prep tray. Yes, we'll take her into the ante room, nurse, and get her on the trolley if we can. But don't worry about the prep tray. She couldn't handle a shave or an enema. Oh, look, world rocked. No mother could have a baby without a perineal <laughs> shave and an enema. Anyway, she... <laughs> Mary got up there and then a minute later she scrambled down off and got on the wall fours and she was rocking backwards and forwards. Baby stuck, baby stuck, she said. Gran says rock. And I said, Mary, Mary, leave her be, said sister. Gran's probably quite right, it could help. And uh, 
Uh, she said, the baby will be here any minute. Oh, I'll go and put the stirrups up in the, in the neighbourhood. Mary couldn't handle stirrups, nurse. I think we'll probably have this baby in here. Get me a tray with gloves. And Mary got back up and the little baby arrived and <laughs> plonked on mother's chest. And I said, oh, I'll take the baby down to the nursery to be weighed and, and the bath. No, nurse, Mary couldn't handle that, being separated from her baby. Get a cot, a, a bassinet out of the nursery and put by bed nine. Old Florence Nightingale wards. 30 beds down one side, 30 beds down the other. Mm. And the babies were never let out of the nursery except for their feeding. Fathers could only peer through the window at them. And that little baby was weighed. Yeah. <clears throat> and sister said, and furthermore, that baby will spend most of its time in bed with that mother. Which was, I was gone smacked completely. Anyway, it's exactly what happened. She said she'll be going home in a couple of days rather than in the seven or eight days that the mothers take. That afternoon I was writing up my case history. What did you learn today, nurse? I said, oh, what I learned today? I think, sister, was there's no one right way. And she said, never forget it. And I didn't. But that was the sort of thing that happened. Broken Hill was a place unique. It had its own rules, its own way of doing things. One fellow said, in Broken Hill, if something goes wrong, you slap on a bit of paint and do it up with a bit of wire. That's how we do it. So I had a, had a fabulous nine months up in... Uh, uh, up in Broken Hill. 1948, June, my sister Vivian, who also trained at the Children's Hospital and just finished her read at King George in Sydney, we boarded the um, Orion and off we went to England. Two and a half magical years over in England. And we went to the um, Birmingham Children's Hospital and that, and then uh, we did some general nursing at Selly Oak, which is just a funny little suburb, but that was good. Then down to London, to the Gordon Hospital, which was a branch of London Westminster. And then to the Royal Paddington for mid. And we had fun there, that was great. But entirely different. The mothers would labour in their own ward, and the baby would be delivered there. And, you know, it was so different from our ex Australian experience. And while we were there, we hitchhiked around the British Isles. 79 different vehicles we rode in. And the most wonderful experience, not one negative experience did we have. Everything from a brand new Rolls Bentley with a pale blue carpet on the back to an animal undertaker's truck with a dead cow on the back. Everything you could think of. Back home to Australia and then Canberra. I knew, um, visited Canberra when just the end of my infant welfare course in Tresillian and fell in love with the place. I said, right, I'm going back to Canberra when we come back from England. And I did uh, three years, I think, at Canberra Hospital, most of the time as the relieving night super. And uh, but all the time in my mind was to get into the baby health centres because the maternal infant health was my special interest. The next thing that happened, I was asked to do the country visiting, and so I had to go off along to the Kingston um, a garage there for a government holding. And when I got on there, the manager said. Can you change a tyre? I said, well, I've never done it. He said, you're not taking a holding out till you can do it. Come along. <laughs> then and there I had to change the tyre, which is much, just as well, because there were two occasions when I had punctures and had to do it. And, um, but these were wonderful, wonderful days. I would visit uh, Royella and Williamsdale, um, Pierce's Creek, Tipman Villa, and all sorts of adventures. And then the mothers, of course, they loved it when sister came because they a lot of them were very lonely. 
and they were very sweet. You'd, they'd have a lovely lunch ready for you and the, the, the silver service, their best autumn crockery out and we'd be having a lovely conversation and all oh, in depth about politics, you name it, whatever. And she'd look at the clock and say, Sister, one o'clock, Blue Hills. Everything stopped for Blue Hills. <laughs> 1957. Oh, that was, that's the year I was married, and then in 58 our Lachlan arrived. So I took 12 years off and had three children. Then in 1971, joined QE2 for 18 and a half years, for the, that was the rest of my career. My, my great joy there was the daycare section, which we really built up. And <clears throat> mothers would come in at 8 in the morning and go up to 3 or 4, and in that time, you had time to uh, assess the mother and the baby and the interaction between them, and it, it was really wonderfully satisfying. And in the last 10 years alone, we had over 20,000 day stay visits of well mothers with well babies. On the whole, you got the odd one you had to refer to hospital. Mothers simply needing support, Someone saying, look, when they came through the door, you'd look at the baby and you'd say, well, come along, Mrs. Jones. Whatever your problem is, this baby looks beautiful. Oh, no, it'd be sort of like this. <laughs> and then you'd take them in and say, now, let's look after baby. Come and have a cup of tea. And you'd take the history. How are you? And half the time the tears would run, they'd say, you're the first one who's asked me how I am since baby arrived, because all the focus has been on baby. And um, it, it was just very, very happy, satisfying work there, and I did love it. But one mum said, Sister, won't you, won't you write all this down for us? And I said, oh, no way, there are far too many baby books out there already. And she said, yes, and she said, a lot are very good, but they're spread too thin. We want everything you can tell us about life with a little new baby, in those first early weeks when we were so unsure. So when I retired, that, that's what I did. I wrote No One Right Way. We published two editions, the one in 2004 and one in 2007. We changed from No One Right Way to Baby Care. But it was very exciting that the Governor General uh, was very, well, not only happy to do it, she said she was keen to launch the book because for two reasons, she felt that it was grand. It was an Australian book for Australian mums and, and written by an Australian midwife. But she said more than that, um, a donation from every book sold goes into the scholarship fund because <clears throat> she recognised, as we do, that until the Indigenous people do midwifery themselves and take it into their communities, marry it with their culture, mm. We won't close the gap. There was always that feeling that we had to try to do something to improve the health of the Indigenous people. But in addition, supply the support that uh, the students need, which would help them to succeed in their uh, quest to become midwives.